what they're made of. Like, this is the kind of aggressiveness we're going to run at you, is that we're used to seeing. Absolutely annihilating them. And I think it's you know, so difficult to figure out what to do against an OG lineup like this, where it doesn't necessarily feel like individual drafting decisions cause the issue. But then when you look at how the draft you know, unfolds and is executed before your eyes, you start to realize that OG, their map movement, that Enchantress Earthshaker, the way they you know, kind of bounce back off each other and give each other space, early game, mid game, get sacked to the Blink Dagger, the cause, you know, kind of selfless. Seb giving up his life every now and then to make sure that mid one gets a fast Aghanim Scepter. But it's really after that point that I want to focus on the five man group up where they are just taking objectives, but I think more importantly, taking areas of the map. Like they play Radiant, they get into the Dire Jungle, they control Outpost, they control Tier 2s, they control Roshan, and they make sure that, like, Hellraisers have two options, basically, right? Hellraisers either mirror the movement and they go opposite side of the map and try and make moves on OG's Tier 2s, OG's they, Outpost. Man, but they, OG can do things faster. They could not mirror the movement in the previous game. They've shut down that Prophet first exorcism used they didn't get too much out of it two supports coming just to defend the tier one tower and luna on the top lane played with the catapult wave they took the tower slark plus oracle can't really take the tower there was a dragonite standing in front of them you can't just ignore yeah. him and take the tower exactly so the other option is hellraisers have to meet og in the jungle and if OG are already ahead, then you're taking this, you know, clash where Slark is out farming, trying to finish off Silver Edge, and you're playing a 4v5. OG are ahead, they've got item advantage, and you just have no options. Like, OG are backing you into a corner and beating you down. As the draft underway yet again, Hellraiser's opting to take out Lesh, Ember, Beastmaster. It looks pretty similar to game one. Doesn't look like anyone's changed. Oh, there we go. Ricky, first phase ban from OG, taking that out straight away. Now, they banned it in the second or the last phase in the previous game. They're really afraid of uh, Ricky. Ricky is such an annoying hero to play against. Like, you get the Fusal Blade, you're the strongest hero on the map. No doubt about it. Yeah, they banned it out last in that first game. Let's see if Timbersaw makes his way into the ban pool, because OG are going to be the ones that have to do it, but they leave it in. So potential here for Hellraisers to maybe play around that Funic Timber. And honestly, that's what I want to see them do. I want them to have more tempo, more you know, agency, more urgency even, as they can potentially try and make moves of their own rather than waiting for OG to come to them. I like the approach from OG. They ban out that Prophet. They're like, yeah, we want to have an even game. We want to be challenged. So we do not want to give you that Prophet who's building a Mithril Hammer. I, I, that's what I was about to say. Like, I would not be surprised if they open up with the two same heroes. Deja vu. So, Troll Warlord immediately comes to mind. I know this isn't Chicken Fighters or NIP who do like to open Oracle Troll every now and then. We know that OG are probably going to ban it second phase. They got rid of DP. They're probably going to get rid of Troll second phase. Do Hellraisers risk going for Troll in the first stage? What are, the, what are the downsides to doing that? It's a hero that's easy to kite. Like any Yule Scepter, OG, they love to run Pugna. But uh, I like this. They have instant stun in terms of like Earthshaker, but if it's going to be either mid or off lane, you get the point in the simulate. You don't care too much about the Fissure. You can just jump over it. Resonant... Pulse shield is dispellable with the Enchantress, so that's a good side for OG. Dragonite taken out by HR, getting rid of some of that tower damage that OG did. <laughs> like So quickly they ramped up with Lunar Helm, DK shoving these tier 1s. They do leave Lycan in the pool, and there is that troll ban, so it does get removed. The combo with Battle Trance and False Promise, gone. OG like to flex heroes here, usually in that third pick. You mentioned Pugna, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of. They, they could very easily just pick Lycan right now. 
Uh, they could. They're still like Vyvern in the pool, which I really like against the Lycan. <laughs> okay, you're just going to have All a repeat right. of game one then. If it's not broken, don't fix it. Like they need to replace Void Spirit with a different kind of a hero. Hmm. I mean, yeah, there's, there's plenty of options there for mid one. I mean, is, wait, is, is Monkey is Monkey available? We could see he Monkey is. King from OG come out, right? There's Void Spirit on the table. If Hellraisers now pick up another hero that doesn't match well against the Monkey King, that fear has to be in the back of your mind right now. It's, it's, it's worth mentioning, though, Void Spirit can go across pretty much every role at this point for Hellraisers, you know, from one through to four. Definitely potential for them to do that. A Treant! Okay, that's, that's a hero that can slow them down. Like, literally, you can armor the tower, you can give shield globally, and then you can play more aggressive on the side lanes. And it's a hero that puts a lot of pressure in the laning stage. Support gets caught in a bad spot, like, you're straight up dead. What do we head into for OG? I can't fully repeat that full draft. Like, are you... I mentioned the Timber Saw earlier. Are you worried about Timber as OG? Like, do you have to pick a hero that can specifically handle the Timber Saw, or are you just going to be like, whatever, we can play around it? They don't have the best heroes right now against Timber Saw. Timber with Hood looks pretty unkillable if you're just looking at the three heroes from OG. <laughs> Uh, there's Impetus, which is pure damage. Any kind of pure damage Timberso does not like to play into. I'm not sure if that's enough. But if they get Timberso, they're pretty limited on the catch once again. Yeah, they sure are. I want to see more team fight from them. Give me the good old Tidehunter days. Like, where's Tide? Where's Enigma? Where are these big team priorities when you need them? Everyone's so reliant on short cooldown, fast-paced heroes right now. So Meposhka very likely going to be this Oracle. Roger Treant, Void Spirit, maybe Funic, maybe Xani. Oh, Lacoste? Where, where's the Tide? Where's the Enigma? Oh, gee, they're listening to me. <laughs> they bring out the big black hole. <laughs> I, I believe you have enough AoE on the Simulate to lock him down. I, I'm not sure if he can get out. Maybe they did the math. They know. Like, you just use black hole on the Simulate, you're going to catch him. Oh, yeah. But Good idea. I, I don't know. I... <laughs> OG is just on a different level than other teams. Like the way they pick, like you literally don't know what they're going to go for. Suddenly Enigma. Right, it's another pushing hero, a great aura carrier. Matches up pretty nicely with Aluna and, you know, timings in terms of pushing down objectives, taking towers. So I'm assuming that's going to be Seb hero. Earthshaker again for Saxa. No Tail takes up the Enchantress. Sumail Luna, so the mid one, mid hero, very likely going to be the last grab. As we should see the Hellraiser's matchups come out a little bit earlier on. They've really got to decide, though, where they want to head with this. Time Whenever you're up. playing against Enigma, you're always afraid that it's going to come to that point where, okay, Enigma's going to get a BKB. How do we cancel it? So you need to have any kind of BKB piercing ability that can stun Enigma. Like a silencer. Get the global silence going against Enigma. Oh, Pangalea. So probably your Funic hero there, and then Void Spirit going to be your Xani, with Nyx being the last pick for Hellraisers. I didn't see any Void Spirits being played on the safe lane. I don't think it's fit for the hero. Like, he needs either, like, solo levels or when he has a good matchup and then he's pressuring the enemy carry. 
So I believe it's going to be... Well, I, <laughs> I believe it's going to be a mid void spirit. Yeah, I, I think so too. Do you try and... Ooh, do you try and match up the Pango against the Enigma to try and like, kill off Eidolons with Swashbuckle, maybe get a 1v1, and try lane... Like, do you try lane Treant, Oracle plus one? Because it is OG, a strong try lane. Because OG try lane the Luna for the first couple of minutes, right? Earthshaker, Eng, Luna, they got a good start for Sumail, and I'm just wondering if Hellraisers do that early on. Queen of Pain ban. So maybe thinking the Void Spirit is going to be the position one, or just removing the threat of Kasani on the co-op, which you know, has been his signature hero, really. Hmm. Well, I believe OG is going to start with a tri lane once again. Enigma, like he's the only hero that can deny the creeps and pull the lane back. They might even run Enigma on the safe lane, as they did Dragonite in the first game. There's the Monkey Ban. So no Monkey King there for mid one. They've got pretty good tower defense, Hellraisers. Overgrowth, Pangalea, Rolling Thunder, great ways to fight around tier ones, around objectives and choke points. Oracle doesn't really have a great target to be saving. Right now, it's looking like he'll be targeting Void Spirit, but I guess this last pick will be the primary false promise target from Eposhka. It's just a little game here for Hellraisers to, you know, catch heroes. Because you're going to have to expend ultimates. Pango and Trian are your primary initiators. I guess Void Spirit gives you that reach and catch with the Astral Step and Remnant as well for single targets. And they go for the Weaver once more. So it looks like it should be that mid Void Spirit and the, the Nyx Weaver coming out. And yet again, very squishy heroes from Hellraisers. And if OG, you know, pick up a hero that can really jump in, dive on these heroes, maybe with a silence or a, a yeah. bit of a stun, but Something nuke like damage. a Puck. Puck would be oh. good. That's, that's perfect. Nuke Even damage, Storm silence. Spirit. Storm Spirit should be fine. They have very limited cash once again on Hellraisers. As you said, like you need to heavily commit with one of the either Altis from Pangolier or Trian Protector. Bloodseeker. <laughs> well, there's a the silence. There's the gap close with all that movement speed as well. Mid one, Bloodseeker. The final pick from OG. Not what I expected at all, but it, it, it fits in with what I wanted, really. As OG round out their draft, Seb will be on that Enigma. Hellraisers, it looks like it is what we expected. Nyx on the Weaver, Funic playing the Pango, and Xani on the Void Spirit for their three cores. Oh, Bloodseeker, you really love to make Pangolier's life miserable. He can't use Rolling Thunder. You need to either stop or you're just dead. Also, Weaver playing on a low HP. Same goes for Treant. Uh, at the early stages of the game, and uh, you can see them. You can see them where they are if their HP is low enough. And you're great at diving towers with the help of Luna and Chantress as well. And the great thing is, like, you know, Kasani uses it to simulate. You put your blood right down. Maybe you, like you say, rupture up Funic or you rupture up Nyx on these Pango and Weaver heroes who are so reliant on that maneuverability. Or you just walk up to an Oracle and, you know, punch him three times and he's dead. Hellraisers, again, work cut out for them here in game two. I think you're leaning OG again, draft-wise? Yeah, their execution was really on point in the previous game. And I like the Bloodseeker pick. I think it counters a lot of these heroes. You can set up things perfectly. Like, imagine... It's not just about the silence. The blood. Some of the spells in Dota are great, in terms of like, yeah, it's an AoE silence dealing damage, but I'd say like Jakiro, Enigma, Bloodseeker's Blood Drive, these abilities that they have, like you choose where you want to fight. You can just block off a huge area where they can't enter, and this is the strength of these heroes. Well, let's find out as we get ourselves into game two of this best of three. Hellraisers taking on OG. 
OG with a one nil lead so far. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. I think that's the primary reason Enchantress is picked for No Tail. Don't be mad. <laughs> now you know when something happened like that kill on Slark in the previous game between tier one and tier two tower when it goes chasing Earth Shaker, you knew that there's gonna be like voice lines used from both him and Seb. Yep. It was coming. Well, OG yet again setting up for what looks like the Trilane, Luna Sumail, No Tail on the Ench, and Saxa, Earthshaker, swinging up to top. But Hellraisers, they are ready and waiting, setting up a bit of a bait here. Funic Maposhka holding high ground, and Saxa will walk into them. Earthshaker, he's got boots up. Maposhka biding his time, though, and they're baiting with Funic, who does have to swashbuckle away, but in comes the rest of the cavalry. Hellraiser's focusing Sumail, but Funic's about to fall. A couple more hits will do the trick, but Funic, the final loosen beam and click get him, but he's traded for Sumail. One for one, but first blood drawn by No Tail. Hellraiser's giving chase onto the Ench and Earthshaker, but I don't believe they're going to be able to catch or kill any further targets here. They're trying with another Fortune's End. But a great Fisher block off stops the advance and Hellraiser's held back in their tracks. So one for one. I mean, Luna died. It doesn't matter that much. Who got the first blood? No tail got it. He bought something. What is he bringing? Just some extra set of tangos, a sentry, a clarity. Yeah, starting off with a Blightstone on Enchantress. It really tipped the scales allowing them to get that first blood and hellraisers they really want to be active this game hell they're smoking down towards bottom so they're not going to try lane and match the top lane they are leaving funic there alone they're trying to try lane into the enigma it looks like roger nix and miposhka all down here seb with eidolons out pauses the game he needs a second just to you know get his radar out see if anything's going ping on it to Couple check if they're trying the to trees. gank him, you know, check the stream, just kidding, it's delayed. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is a good decision from Hellraisers to go back to the bottom lane. I would say OG's tri lane is much, much stronger. Like having a Fisher, Luna providing aura. I, I believe OG's fine with this. Like, Seb I think is not the guy who should get the extremely farm this game so he's just gonna be you know denying some of the xp and if they keep this try lane that means that a lot of experience is gonna be shared but the poshka that's that's a good call drag the creep wave get it closer to tier one tower so that enigma does not Done. have regeneration and extra armor and making sure like you're saying you know this this try lane if he's denying a creep every wave as well Sharing it between three heroes doesn't feel so good. Seb under the tower should be able to gather up a little bit of CS here and there, but Hellraiser's maneuvering that creep equilibrium all the way back. Mid lane, mid one, five nil, very even. Ksani tying things up. And here comes the no-tail rotation. One and a half minutes in, they've already pressured Phonic a decent amount. They've farmed no-tail up close to level two. And Roger's actually the one taking the brunt of the damage here with that satyr. With these idols bringing him incredibly low. He's sitting at 200 HP, which means that Bloodseeker... Like, you need to be careful when you're playing against the Bloodseeker. You can't just be on low HP. He does not have a flask to work with. So this gives Med1 pretty easy lane. Here he can just right-click. Has a Blood Rite, no points in Blood Rage yet. Probably gonna get that on level 4 to have any kind of a sustain. He's running low on tangos. And again, Luna has a free lane top. Funic has cracked level three. Sacks are holding on to that Fisher, But a, a one lane top. Mid lane very even. And bottom lane, Sam's getting everything he needs. They try and make a play onto No Tail. We've seen this one before. He does go for that early point in heal just to sustain a little bit longer. But they will be able to bring down the Enchantress at long last. But again, this this feels calculated from OG. Two games in a row now. Very often we see. Oh, Nick Nix. Okay, he has the Shikuchi. That thirst still up on him, though. Dangerous territory for the Weaver. But yeah, again, No Tail comes down. 
He puts pressure, he forces spells to be cast on him, he dies, but he respawns, TP's bot lane again, and now you look at Nyx, Miposhka, and Roger. They are low mana, they've been forced to salve up, and they're being pressured again yes. by this, you know, level 2, position 5 enchantress. I'm just looking at his item belt, he has 8 tangos, what? <laughs> I don't know why he brought six tangos. He was already having uh, like three of them. Maybe he just wants to cut all the trees so Triant can't attack from this side. And uh, Seb can do that the same thing with the Midnight Pulse. So yeah, you know oh, you that, yeah, you know the Triant is gonna come from the right side only. Absolutely. Oh, he's cutting down some trees there, Midnight Pulse. Or maybe you can combine ten tangos and just insta kill the Triant. Get a super tango. Destroy <laughs> Roger with one one move. Just eat him. In. Power. What yeah. if Battle Fury could like cut down Treant? Quell. Just quell the Treant, yeah. Dyer's middle tower is under I mean, no tell right now. He's 1v2ing the supports. This tri lane from Hellraiser is doing absolutely nothing. Seb is 13 8. He's closing in on level 4. Nyx has had to expend like oh, two lane or three Oh, he's going for Sumail. Oh! He's very close to it. He's got three stick charges, but Swashbuckle on cooldown, so he can't go diving in for the kill. In a 1v2, Funnick very nearly taking down Sumail's Luna. He could afford to play aggressive as that. Uh, One point in Shield Crash, not what you usually see. You only get the point in Shield Crash when you're playing against Rubik, so that he can't steal your Rolling Thunder. Look how low Funnick is. Mid also low, bottom lane, they're, they're healthy. But, uh, They're TPing Bloodseeker, Bloodseeker though. Yep. The Thirst, the blood right is coming out, and Nick can't stop. The clicks from mid one is going to chase for more. This is a double kill for, for OG for sure. Mid one and No Tail gathering them up. They're going to go for a third. Miposhka, the tri lane is annihilated. So Hellraiser nice. didn't see that one coming, and Bounty Runes, it might just be a four for nil here. Void Spread, okay, he's going to get one. But OG should be able to gather up the remaining three. My goodness. Bounty. One TP rotation from mid one, now he's level six. What a great move. Yeah, meanwhile, Soxa was also collecting some of the XP. He is level four, which is pretty high for five minutes in. And Luna Die. on the top lane having a free time. Like Because of the Bloodseeker, Pangolier was forced to TP out. He understood, man, I'm gonna kill my team because I'm on 20% HP. Hellraiser is still sticking it out down bottom lane though. No tail is here alone. Enigma going to be walking back to lane slowly but surely. Mid one seems fine mid still. Treant and Oracle. They do make a play onto No Tail. He's got a couple of stick charges, but that purifying flames now up to level two. Burn through the Enchantress. Couple of kills for HR, not too bad, but Enigma's here. Scouted out by the Observer Ward, he's holding sentry. His courier died. Wait, hang on a second. Is is um, Seb going for Necro Rush? Possibly. I, he just he's bought got a two sa Sages Mask. If there's a second, where's the second one? I don't see it. On, a, on his on courier. courier. Okay. Oh, here we go. TP down bottom lane again. Seb is blown up as No Tail died by Xani. Mid one's rotation with a thirst here. Blood right. Oh, it connects with the final clicks. Perfect. Barely. I thought Ksani would be out of there. Sax has killed off Funic top lane. And Weaver with Roger deep in behind enemy lines here. Not quite sure what to do with themselves. The Bloodseeker, these TPs in to defend this tower. Yes, you lose, you know, an Enchantress or Enigma, Enigma here or there. But Bloodseeker is accelerating so quickly off the back of these kills. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Necrobook on Enigma. It just feels so good, like Malefus into Necro units. Oh, the uh, stun into he's Silence! He's dead again! Weaver's dead! Weaver currently 1, 2, and 3. Nyx is not having a game. Now Seb can have a free lane for a couple of minutes. Bloodseeker's gonna start farming Ancients and then finding Roger. They've got a Centaur to maybe catch with a Stomp. The Thirst, it kicks in. They've got them. They've got the tree and... Eight to four, this is just a slapping from OG. It's just falling apart so quickly. Like top lane, Phonic was putting some pressure on Luna. Luna shows up, brings some extra region in the lane, uses Lucent Beam two, three times with the Fisher. Suddenly he's 
back to no HP at all, and uh, he needs to stay away. It's just too much, the... too much damage output in the laning stage. Yeah, it, it really is. Helm of the Dominator is now, you know, 200 gold away once Sumail finishes off this camp. So they're going to have Helm of the Dominator in less than a minute. Hmm. Necrobook on Enigma is 700 gold away. Oh, top lane. When these guys start grouping up, it's going to be immense. Okay, they, they catch Saks at top. He's got himself Tranquils, Raindrops, and he's got 200 odd gold on the way to Blink Dagger. So not really, not really too worried about his death there. Hey, have you seen what mid one's buying, by the way? Speaking of item builds... Hey, it's a great item. Uh, Pangolier really hates to play against her boot. It stops the TP. Same goes for Void Spirit. Like oh, Sumail. They've found Sumail in the jungle. Hellraiser's finally getting in there. Stopping that Luna from farming away to Helm. Now 40 gold away from it, but she'll have that when she respawns pretty quickly. And yeah, Bloodseeker, Rod of Atos, so the root against Pango. Oh, I guess also Void Spirit. Oh, this is nice. Fortune's End onto the Rolling Thunder. Not quite nice enough, though. They don't make the full connection. They've got the Spirit onto Saxa, but mid one's arrived. Focusing Funic, the Swashbuckle off. He dives into the trees, but they've got stuns and catch for days. And mid one now unstoppable. 6 0 on this Bloodseeker. If you know how to play Pangolier, you know how to play against him. I'm not going to say it's easy to juke, but uh, Rolling Thunder, you can just make a fast shift, fast turn. Like all these small pieces, once again, coming together for OG. Lanes were going well. Enigma is level 6, just needs 100 gold to finish. The Necrobook, Helm of the Dominator, flying out to Luna. And they're going to start grouping up. And this is this is really where I feel OG are exceptionally good, right? Around that 10 minute mark when outposts and bounty runes are so important. They come in, they take the top one, they'll gather up some bounties, they try and get into the dire jungle a little bit. But it's this top tier one when you're playing Radiant Side feels so important right now. Because it, it just gives you so much extra map space to play in. And it kind of gives you Roshan. Or at least the area around it as well. So then you can start, you know, pivoting into mid tier one. You can think about diving into tier two. You can wrap around and, and maybe play into the enemy triangle as well between, you know, come between the mid tier one and tier two because there's such a wide open space for you to play into. But first, they've got to take that tower top. Mid one just dragging the creep wave. He's level 10, 10 minutes in. How happy are you, Gary, that you're not observer this game, like this tournament, so you can just focus? Ecstatic. <laughs> I'm sure the viewers are very happy as well. And I've caught Funic. Midnight Bonds has broken even the uses Mid ones even a rapture. <laughs> oh dear. So, so now that tier one's gone, OG, they, you know, just swing into mid, right? They're TPing Enchantress there, they can bring everyone. I guess Saxa can stay top and maybe farm. I would love to see Seb come through as well. Seb still has a black hole, but didn't um, see it being used so far. Like, Viva goes in. Dyer's top tower. She's Dyer's gonna get black hole. And it's such I'm a dead. sick setup. You have Fisher, you have Midnight Pulse, also Blood Drive, Dyer's so you can choose where you want to fight. Full Road of Athos, 11 minutes on Bloodseeker. Well, that's gonna be great to catch I hope this it's not coming from my pubs. <laughs> is under attack. And here's that move. They come in for the tier one. Now they've got a, a massive, vast amount of map space. They can come into the triangle, which mid one comes to scout out. We'll find Miposhka as he walks past him in the trees. Yeah, there's the ping. Sees the oracle. Rod of Atos, blood right. Fortune's end will dispel off the route. And Miposhka still just kind of gets slain here on his own jungle high ground. OG. Saxa continues farming top lane towards Blink, and yet again we see Nyx on this carry, playing opposite side of the map, not joining fights, feeling like he needs to farm to win, but he's being ruptured, tower still hitting him, hey, the loot will stop the TP, and that is why Bloodseekers bought him, while top lane the Echo Slam, Saxa catches two with a vicious chain stuns in the black hole, catches the Void Spirit, so Xani's down and Rodjo is likely to be following as Funix, Rolling Thunder, does crash into Saxa to get them at least a kill in return, but it's a two for one with a core and a support for one support and funny. He needs a swashbuckle away from this. They've got themselves a Lucent Beam and a Stomp from the Centaur available, but they need that little bit of gap close so they don't have it. So swashbuckle gives Funic the distance he needed. Still disastrous 
here for Hellraisers, losing the Weaver bot in a 1v1 and then losing the team fight top, you're just falling to pieces. I love the way Saxa moved. Like he was going through Black Hole and he baited Pangalier to run into it. Look where Seb is playing. He's just controlling the whole area. Cut down some trees with the Midnight Pulse, farming everything in the enemy jungle. And I think mid one is realizing that this bottom right hand corner of the map is not where he belongs. He pushed out one extra wave, but he should really be coming back to rejoin the rest of his squad in that mid lane. And a great move from Hellraiser is looking to cut him off. They have timed this almost to perfection. The smoke kill. breaks. They've got the vision. The jump onto mid one. There's the catch. Ksani Miposhkia bursting him down. Mid one turns with the blood right. He's pretty speedy and his one charges are gone. He's got the heal from the purifying flames going and he turns with that the rough sprinting out of there. Hellraisers don't get the kill. If you think about Fisher as I'm just going to stun people, sometimes it's better to block them off. He blocked away Pangalari so he can't connect the second Rolling Thunder. And now on the top lane, Luna and Enigma will just uh, take a tower. Also, it would be a lot of gold Radiant's if they kill the Bloodseeker. He's on attack. eight kill streak right now. I mean, you look at these Eidolon and Necro creeps with all these auras. The Eidolons are doing like 70 damage a hit when they're near Luna. Yeah, 47 plus 23. Necro Warrior, 75 plus 37. That's ridiculous amounts of damage right now. No Tail being slapped around by Roger, but I'm not sure if that's really where he wants to be. Ksani and Maposhka are here to try and save him, but the Treants just cut down. OG the Lumberjacks destroying the Amazon forest tree by tree, and Maposhka's going to get hunted here by mid one. Doesn't have a fortune's end, does have false promise once the silence ends. It looks like mid one not really committing to diving under that tower without the rest of his squad. But it's objective time. For OG. Pressure onto these tier 1s and tier 2s. Oh, okay, no tail. Hunting Miposhka. Hello. Hello. Don't run off. He's caught him. He's trapped him in the trees. They've got a centaur stomp to stop him if he tries to TP. And mid one's going to be coming with a couple of clicks and that's it. Miposhka's oracle down. No tail gets that perfect body block. And I don't think Roger can really defend this tower, honestly. They're playing so fast right now. They, they managed to get the 10k Maybe a little lead. too fast. Seb will get picked off mid lane. So left out in the open. Dyer's bottom tower isolated from the rest of the team. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Blessings of the Lord of Warrior. Overgrowth. Tries to buy Roger a bit of time. Even with that living armor though. Mid one. Oh, does get disarmed up. Good blood ride. He's going to connect onto a couple of heroes here. But the rolling thunder and the chain stun from that remnant. Roger still drops through the false promise, but mid one's monster kill streak picked up by Nick. So plenty of bonus gold there for your Weaver, grabbing up a good 500 odd. And it's very important that Weaver got that gold. She's gonna finish off the Fusal Blade. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Earthshaker just finished his Blink Dagger. So OG's gonna continue with the pressure. Enigma also getting a Blink Dagger in 100 gold. So I expect a team fight in the Roche from OG. They just need those two blink daggers to be ready. Man, man Midland's going for Aghanim Scepter. <laughs> but the, like, here's the problem, right? 11,000 net worth lead at 16 minutes. All of these items for OG. And then you look at the dire side. Nyx has a Diffusal Blade on Weaver. Roger is trying to build Necrobook himself. Oracle has sweet fuck all. He has got Windlace and that's all they'll talk about. Where the Void Spirit is trying to go into your Scepter, but still pretty distant from it. And Pango really doesn't have anything. Arcane's looking for Blade Mail, so no, no Vlad there coming in for Funny, because they do make a jump towards No Tail and the Roche Pit. Sumail's there, but the Eidolon's cleared up now. Ksani gets a good Astral Catch onto mid one. It's the Rolling Thunder into the back lines. Looks like Earthshaker being focused. Sansa's Blink Echo still being held. So OG, they lose nothing. Hellraisers expend a couple of ulties. And the chase is still on to Roger. OG oh, just going to go straight back in the pit. They've got no tail. Cool. Nyx has killed off the, en uh, the Enchantress, but... Oh, Miposhka, quick fortune's end. Get away from mid one. The Lucent Beam and the chase up the hill. Mid one's so speedy. Miposhka, he's got a couple of seconds until False Promise. He edicts up the Bloodseeker. Stops him from attacking, but that Lucent Beam from Sumail. Long range artillery.
As OG got a couple of kills, a courier falls in the midst of it all, and Sax is still waiting for that flick echo. Nyx is hunting for him. They black hole up Funic. The Pangolier is down. Don't be mad. Hellraiser is just getting just tickled to death, little by little. Silence is golden. Uh, good decision from OG. They decided to get out of the pit, take a fight, and now they picked it up. Even though they expand first black hole just to kill Phonic. You know things are not going well for your Pangolier when he has two bracers. It's it's a correct choice of the items. Like he needs to be able to tank up, survive as much as he can. Sunny. There's the road of Athos. And he's ruptured up as well. Fisher into Blink Echo. Saxa lines it up for the kill on Void Spread. He's got the Resonant Pulse, so that makes him a little tankier than OG were expecting. So a couple of ulties there from OG, not netting the many kills as Enchantress went a little bit deep for that one. No tail playing almost in the dire base. They're not on the same page. Feels like mid one didn't expect that Saxa is going to blink in and use Echo Slam. But still, it doesn't matter that much. Phonic in a good spot, but doesn't have Rolling Thunder. They're trying to focus down mid one. They break all the trees around him, and another great Fisher with the Eclipse. Sumail dominating now. Luna makes short work of that poor Void Spirit, and Roger will follow him into the grave. This is going to be a pretty simple tier two. They've got Aegis still up for another, what, three minutes more on this Luna? Three and a half minutes. Mike, does your Roshan respawn timer look weird to you? Is it bugged? Not at all, it says. Interesting. Roche may respawn in the 626. Yeah, I, I've got the... Yeah, mine says 622, but the text is really, really small for some reason. <laughs> it's like size 2 font. Still in beta. Weird stuff happening. So, Bounty Hellraisers, what, what, what do they need to do? How, how do they get out of the rut they're in right now? Double damage. Hmm. Gotcha. Viver has a decent amount of farm but i don't think it's enough you're still very vulnerable pre bkb <laughs> agonim scepter finish he's just utility on this blood scene you don't need any kind of damage second rupture plus road of Athos. like luna will be the one who's dealing damage and clearing out the buildings i was it's just was beautiful just watching to that watch, happen, Gary. the way they played dota it's just so crisp. OG, very clean execution. Like, Sani there, he's in a decent position for a Void Spirit to maybe cut a wave or something. But OG catches a glimpse of him, and immediately they're just like, like, like this with Funic. He gets ruptured up, he's gonna get silenced by Blood Right. the dive is there, but they force the False Promise. So Funic now will have to return to Fountain, and you still lose your Tier 3. And Luna is still on the front lines with Blood Rage on destroying your buildings the structural annihilation of hellraiser's base right now 21 minutes in og with a substantial net worth lead looking for roger even deep inside his base there tries to heal himself up doesn't even get the overgrowth off a backstab from Ksani, focusing down the Earthshaker, but he's got chain stuns for days and still has that blink echo if need be. This is a big blink echo if he wants it, the black hole. Cancelled by that rolling thunder, but they've got the yours up with the rupture in. On to Ksani now. Where's Saxa? There he is. Hello, Saxa. How are you doing, oh, buddy? The blink GG. echo destroys them. Oh, hell raises. This is it. You can't hold on, and GG's called. Roger taps out. Sab got the perfect black hole in the end. Three man, but Rolling Thunder just clipped him. One of the shortest black holes in the histories, besides your own ones. Chat where you use it uh, and then you cancel it or you use BKB after. But definitely OG, man, they look scary. Really, really scary. And again, like. It doesn't feel like they're doing anything like magical in the draft. Luna, cool pick. Enigma, nice. But it's just like that map movement, right? It's the rotations from mid one. It's Enchantress bouncing between lanes. Sacrifice, like no tell in these games, sacrifices himself in lanes so Seb can keep getting experience and keep accelerating. Then they give space to Saxa to always get that blink timing on Earthshaker while Sumel dips back into the jungle. The Hell of the Dominator allows Luna just to free farm through that jungle at an incredible rate and hell raises 
I, I don't know, it's just like a helicopter that never got off the ground. They're missing a few rotors. They don't have a pilot. Something just feels missing from this lineup. I don't know if it's shot calling or if they, they're, they're drafting as 